Janome. Hi, everybody. I'm Kimberly Einmo. Welcome back to my studio for month five of the Janome Block of the Month Blitz 2 quilt. We are making great progress. With the completion of month four, we have all of the blocks in our bottom border and our side border done. And today it's all about finishing the next border in. We're moving ever so closer to that big block in the center. Today we're gonna to be working on this little block here, block J, and then we're gonna be making our beautiful flying geese gradated strips and we're calling that block K, even though it's really not a block, it's a bunch of small units together. But you'll be able to follow along on your handouts to see the placement of everything. We're also gonna talk at the end about what to do about squaring up these blocks now that they're all finished. So we have quite a bit to cover today and I wanna jump right in and talk about block J. So before we go any further, make sure you go to the link below to print out your handouts for month five of the Block of the Month Blitz. And you'll find everything you need there to make Block J and the Flying Geese units. And you'll be sure and want to uh, print out all the pages so you can see the placement of the blocks and what we're actually working on. But the first thing first, we wanna have a little warm up and make Block J. Block J is right here in the quilt. It's kind of where uh, we've got these flying geese pointing into this yellow square. And it's just a cute little four and a half inch square made up of four two and a half inch half square triangles. So let's take a look at what we're gonna need. You're going to need uh, some of your strips of your, well, one strip of your lemon and one strip of your background fabric. And these are both two and a half inch strips. I like to put these right sides together and make sure that you've got them lined up. And then you're going to use side B of the uh, precision flying geese and half square triangle ruler, and we're gonna be cutting our units. Now this is nothing new, we've done this plenty of times already in the previous months. So what you wanna go ahead and do is you want to make sure to go ahead and cut four of these little units out. And you can see here that I've just got these units uh, already cut, doubled, and then you're going to stitch along the long or hypotenuse side of those. Yes. <laughs> those hypotenuse side of those triangles to create your little uh, half square triangles, and they will look like this. So I've already got them pressed and I've trimmed the dog ears, which is ultra important. Now I'm going to have you follow along on page two of your handouts. And you will notice there's nothing really magical about this, but it is very important to follow along with the arrows as to how the seams are pressed. And I've got that laid out here, but upside down. I've turned these uh, so they're right side down and we're looking at the back side. And you can see that they literally, the seams match up with the handouts where I've got the seam pressed in towards the lemon, and this one in the top right position is pressed out towards the background fabric, and here we've got the seam pressed in towards the lemon and out towards the background fabric. When you flip these over, you're gonna take these to the sewing machine and sew them together, just like we've done so many times, but by pressing the seams in the direction that we have, we will be able to snuggle those seams together and you will get a really, really beautiful point when we put all the pieces together. Next, you're going to sew them. And I'm gonna move these aside because through the magic of being able to um, film this in advance, I've already chain pieced those units. You can see the little thread in between. And when you get to the pressing surface or your ironing board, you're going to take the right unit and press the seam away from your body. Take the second unit pair 
and press the seam back toward your body. So we've got the seam here going away from your body and the seam here coming toward your body. And when you put these right sides together, these will be perfectly aligned so you can finish the seam and create a beautiful uh, little four and a half inch square. And that is block J. That's all there is to it. So this is a nice little warm up for what's coming. Go ahead, get your block J all sewn, all trimmed. It should be four and a half inches unfinished. And then we're gonna talk about what to do with all those flying geese. So today it's all about making two of these beautiful, I would like to call them inner borders of gradated flying geese. And they are so pretty and so much fun. There's nothing magical about making these. We're gonna do some of it together here, but you've already made a lot of flying geese. If you don't feel perfectly comfortable yet making these and having them come out right, the practice of making these units is going to make you a pro, I promise. So what you're going to need to do is pull out strips of your fabrics that are left over of the, the colors that are listed on page two, actually also on page one of your handouts. The one thing I want to point out is you will be using 16 different colors. Now you don't have to use the colors as listed here. Remember, we have 20 different colored strips in your bundle. So you can pick the strips that you want. The only reason that we didn't or that I didn't put uh, violet and grape into these um, gradated strips is because we really didn't have enough of the fabric left over of those purples. But you really don't need it because there actually is lavender in there. But if you wanna switch out some of the other colors or do something a little different with yours or mix them all up and make them just a rainbow of different fabrics rather than all gradated, please feel free to do that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut from the 15 colors listed here. You will need two side A triangles of each color and four side B triangles, or shall I say two pairs of side B triangles from each of the colors. Why is orange listed separately? That would make the 16th color because we already cut those previously. Now, if you didn't, don't worry about it at all, but I had already cut pre-cut these, I think back in month one, and you should have cut uh, your little side B triangles and your side A triangles. You will need those when you're making these, you would have two each of the side A orange triangles and a total of four side B triangles or two pair of side B orange triangle triangles. And finally, don't forget, you will need two of your background side A triangles and two pair of your side B triangles. Once you have all of those cut, then it's time to lay them out and sew your flying geese. So let's meet over at the sewing machine. We'll talk about it a little bit. I'll start sewing mine and you can get yours all set up and ready to sew. I promise you, right before the camera came on, I had these all laid out beautifully. And then my, uh, my assistant in the studio decided to come and uh, rearrange my props, but that's all right. You all know and love Cheeto almost as much as we do. So I know you know it's okay. Let's just talk about those pesky little flying geese. These uh, are not hard by any means. You've sewn many flying geese before, but I find it helps to lay them out literally in the gradations as listed, if you're following along, as listed on page two of the handouts. And literally you're going to be uh, laying them out so the side B triangles of the color right before it 
go on to the next one. Does that make sense? We have a side A orange, and then we have the two side B oranges, and they're gonna get sewn to the flame, and then the flame side B triangles are going to get sewn to the maraschino, and so on and so on and so on. When you have all your units laid out like this, I find it's really easy to sit at the mach machine and just chain piece them using that beautiful, perfect, scant quarter inch seam allowance. So this is not hard. It's just something you're going to want to take your time, have a good uh, book on tape ready to go or some music in the background and just take your time. Don't rush through this. You're actually making a total of 34 flying geese. So we are going to be uh, just sewing. I'm gonna do it. You can follow along. We'll probably do it in a time-lapse format so you can just see me going through the process, but you just set yourself up, get yourself all laid out, ready to go. So all of one side of the triangles, the side B triangles on first, take time to go press those with the seams out towards the side B triangles. Always, always, always press those seam allowances away from the side A triangles or the center triangles. And then we'll be ready to add the, the second side on, the second side B triangles. And then we're going to talk about truing them all up, squaring them all up so they'll go together perfectly. All of the first side B small triangles are sewn on for all 17 of our units. For you, it'd be 34. I had just already done a whole set before you got here. So anyway, just wanted to give you a quick little reminder that you wanna make sure and press those units closed first, meaning before you press the, um, the triangles open, give them a good press with a hot iron closed first, then you can open each one and make sure that you press it. I, I do use water in my iron. I like the steam because we really wanna set these seams here. And I'm being very careful not to stretch or distort, but I am pressing so that the side B triangles are going to lay flat and beautiful on each of these units. Make sure that you get all of those done. And then we're gonna go back to the machine and sew on the remaining side B triangles. And Cheeto's echoing what I'm saying here. Either that or he's just asking for treats. But let's get all these pressed and we'll meet back at the sewing machine and put on the remaining side B triangles. We've sewn all of the side B triangles on and we're ready to go press all of our flying geese units. Now you know how to do this. So I'll go get mine pressed, you get yours pressed. Then let's meet back at the cutting table. We're gonna talk about truing them up exactly like they're supposed to be so that when we sew them all together, it becomes really easy to do. So get that done, I'll meet you at the cutting table. Now all of our flying geese are created, sewn and pressed, but here's the secret. The secret to making these beautiful long borders of gradated flying geese work so well is the fact that you take the time to square them all up. What you're going to need to do is take your precision pre-cuts ruler or your precision jelly roll ruler. And we're gonna be using the two and a half by four and a half inch marks on the, the ruler themselves. The lines that are the two and a half by four and a half inches, because that's what they should measure. 
So either one of these rulers will work perfectly well for this. And I'm going to show you how we trim them up. Now they may not need trimming up much at all. Yours might be absolutely perfect, but those dog ears do need to be cut off because as you know, dog ears are the cellulite of quilting and they're going to create lumps and bumps in these beautiful flying geese units once they're sewn together, unless we take them off now. So a little bit of work now, a little bit of hard work in trimming them up off at this point will make sure that your borders are beautiful and lie perfectly flat. So here's one of our cute little flying geese units. And the goal is to trim these up so that they're two and a half inches by four and a half inches unfinished. Typically, there will not be much to trim at all. Sometimes you may only be trimming off the dog ears themselves, but I never skip this step because I wanna get rid of any of the schmutz or the schnivlets that are left over, and we need to do that here right now. So what we're gonna do is I have my jelly roll ruler. Like I said, you can also use the precision pre-cuts ruler because the markings are the same you'll find your two and a half inch wide marking right here. You can actually even see the little number and then you count over, here's four and the four and a half inch line is right there. What we're gonna do is we're going to line this up on the unit and it's very important that you look for the two and a quarter inch hash mark and kind of put that as close to the point, meaning lined up vertically with the, the point here uh, as you can, and then hold your ruler in place. And with your rotary cutter, you're, uh, you're gonna take off the right side and then across the top. Now, in this case, there wasn't much to take off at all, just a little bit of schmutz, but then we're gonna rotate it around the whole unit line it back up, and now we're going to take the ruler, put it back on the unit, line up the two and a half inch line here on the, on the side that we just trimmed, and the four and a half inch line should cover up the raw edge here, and then you'll see that the 45 degree line lines up along that seam. Once you've done that, hold your ruler in place, there's really not a lot to take off here, but I never skip this just in case there's a little bit of fuzz or schmutz or something because now this unit is 100% accurate. If yours are turning up a little small, a couple things you can do is you can take it back over to the iron, give it an extra good press with some steam, make sure it's really flat, Make sure you don't have any puckers in the seams here. Make sure they're 100% flat. Sometimes just an extra press makes all the difference. Ultimately, these are rather forgiving in the sense that once you get them all sewn together, I don't think you're gonna have any problems uh, making them fit along your other pieces in your quilt. Let's do one more just to demonstrate that again because you can see that this is a very important step. Again, lay out your unit, take your ruler, line it up so that we have the two and a half inch line along the bottom of our unit here and the four and a half inch line should be pretty close to the raw edge, but it's really more important to make sure the two and a quarter inch hash mark is aligned vertically with the center point. That's how we make sure that we keep them absolutely um, just really even and not lopsided or asymmetrical. So we're gonna trim there. Again, you're not trimming much. Rotate the unit back around. Lay your ruler back down on it. I'm lining up the two and a half inch line here and the four and a half inch line. And then my 45 degree line lines up on that seam and then you can take off any excess right here. And don't worry if there's times when nothing but the dog ears comes off. But you can see that's a beautiful unit and we still have our quarter inch seam allowances left over at the tip. So we won't be trimming off their heads anytime soon. So go ahead, get all of yours trimmed. Take breaks if you have to, do just a few at a time, 
and get these all trimmed up. And I have one last really good piece of advice to share with you. Take it from the voice of experience. You never ever want to trim up your units or your blocks after 9 p.m. No matter how alert and awake you think you are, <laughs> trust me, it's better to wait until you're fresh during the day, you've got daylight, everything's bright, because you'll make more mistakes by trying to trim up your blocks late at night than any other time. So go ahead, get all of your flying geese trimmed up, take your time, do it over a couple hours or maybe a day or two, and then we're gonna meet over at the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to put them all together. Real quick, before I move over to the sewing machine, I just wanted to pop in quickly to show you, oh, I don't think anything makes my heart as happy as seeing all these beautifully gradated colors and, and flying geese units all trimmed and squared up, ready to go. They look absolutely perfect, as I'm sure yours will too. But I did wanna show you, look at all the little schmutz that was left over. And this would have all been in your seam allowances had we not taken the time to trim it off. So it's better to get rid of all the yucky stuff now so that our units are gonna be beautiful and perfect and flat when we sew them all together. All right, I'm gonna throw this away and meet you at the sewing machine. Now we're ready to sew all these perfect flying geese together. Really, there's only one little trick I wanna share with you. First of all, you're going to lay them out in the order to make sure that you've got all the gradations correct, or at least in the order that you want to see them in your quilt. And you're probably gonna do the same for both rows. You're probably not gonna mix them up, but if you do, that could be a design element in itself. The trick here is that when you put the units together, when you pick them up to sew them together, make sure that you are sewing them so that we have the um, point that's gonna go right underneath the needle. So we've got, we're gonna sew right up here. When we line up these raw edges, we're gonna be sewing along. And when you come to the X, remember you're going to take and try to hit your needle like one thread on the outside edge of that intersection of your thread. So it makes an X. Try your, to hit your needle at one thread outside that intersection. And I'm gonna be sewing these, but when you, when you sew, make sure as you pick the next unit up and the next one that you're going to be always sewing so that you can aim your needle for this point. You wouldn't wanna flip it over and sew it on this side because you can't see where that point is. And it's ultra important that we know where the point is going to be. So make sure when you're sewing that we're going to sew where we can see the point. And I'm gonna demonstrate that for you right now where you can watch and then we'll do the next one. Line up your raw edges and then just make sure you keep everything aligned because they were trimmed it shouldn't be a problem at all. And we're just going to make sure that when we sew, we're going to sew right up to that intersection. Now I'm gonna open and show you how perfect this point is going to look. If you've ever had trouble with flying geese in the past and cutting off their heads, you won't moving forward because that's the secret to getting this beautiful, perfect point. Now we need to add the next one in order. And if you have to, lay it down with the next one to make sure that you're matching the colors. Then take this unit, flip it right sides together, pick it up. So we're going to be sewing where you can see the intersection again. And that's all there is to it, really. We're just going to sew along there 
and make sure you line up the raw edges and aim your needle so it hits one thread outside of the intersection. I did it again. Once you do this a few times, it's actually really fun because each time you know, you're gonna be getting another perfect point. So that's all you need to do. I'm gonna have Mr. Kim do a close up over on this side so you can see how the needle is on the outside of that intersection. And then you're gonna be ready to zoom right through these and put them all together. You did it. You should feel so proud of yourself. This is probably the most tedious part of the entire quilt is just getting all these flying geese done. But oh, what a magnificent accent they make for the entire quilt. I mean, I think the gradated colors just work perfectly to show how all the blocks are gradated. And then even the spectacular colors of the big block are accented by these wonderful strips of flying geese. So the only thing left to do with them is to press them. And I want you to look here. I've sewn mine, but I haven't pressed them yet. You can see that they kind of, the seams kind of are pointing like they want to go this way. They want to kind of just naturally uh, get pressed in this direction. But I'm going to tell you that you have to be the boss of them. We need to press them exactly the opposite way. I don't recommend pressing the seams open here. I recommend a really hot iron and pressing the seams toward the points because there's a reason for this. If you do that, and I've got a really hot iron and I'm just gonna hold the, the, the unit taut and I'm gonna just take my iron and start moving toward the points. The reason is, is we expose the corners. We will expose these corners that also are a little intersection here. Had we pressed the seams the other way, guess what? It would have hidden the corners and we wouldn't know how to sew so that we make sure that we don't cut off the little side points. Can you see that? Mr. Kim, get in there real close. We need to make sure that by pressing the seams towards the head or the tip of the center of the flying geese units, we're exposing the X's or the intersections right here so that when we go to sew our background pieces to these units, we'll be able to make sure we don't trim off any of those side points. So again, all you wanna do is hold your unit taut, don't stretch, use a very hot iron and carefully slide it along. Go slow as you do. You can see that I'm not stretching anything out of shape. I'm keeping the shape. Do use water in your iron, even if you don't press the steam button. You want that moist heat coming out. I, I do like to use steam. And we wanna make sure that we're pressing toward the center tips so that we're exposing all those side intersections on both sides. It will make such a difference 
to how these units will lay flat in your quilt. Even though it seems like a lot of extra work right now, trust me on this one. You will be so glad you took the time to press your units just like this. And then when you're all done, flip your strips over and you will see that you have beautiful, beautiful points all the way down. Not one head is cut off and you will have a beautiful strip that will be ready to sew into your quilt very soon. Finally, the last thing you wanna do is lay your strips down and measure them. They need to measure four and a half inches wide by 34 and a half inches long unfinished. Now, if yours are a little short, maybe you can um, adjust some of your seams a little bit, or if yours is a little longer than 34 and a half inches, maybe you can just take up a few of the seams, just make little tiny adjustments or repress if you have to. But my guess is because you took the time to trim each of your flying geese units, yours will be just perfect at 34 and a half inches. So go ahead and get that done. We're done with blocks J and K, and we'll be back for a little bonus uh, talk about how to true up your other blocks. We're in the home stretch of month five for the block of the month Blitz 2 quilt. You all did so great today. You should have finished your little cute little block J and all of your block K, which are those long, beautiful flying geese strips. I know it was some tedious sewing, but aren't you excited at how it looks? And now that you have them done, how beautiful they are. One last thing I thought we'd talk about in this month before we get ready to move forward to finishing our beautiful large block is now would be a good time to trim up all your other blocks. Now each of these blocks in the bottom row and this column here should measure eight and a half inches by eight and a half inches unfinished. You can take your precision pre-cuts ruler and square them up. Now make sure to do this when you're not overtired, when it's daylight, never after 9 p.m., and go ahead and lay your ruler down on your blocks one at a time. Use the 45 degree line on your ruler whenever possible and line them up so that you can just trim away any of the excess or schmutz that's left over. Just go up one side and across the top and kind of wipe everything away and then spin your block, lay it down, line them up on the eight and a half inch lines on your ruler and trim anything that's excess. And you just kind of want to get that done. If it seems daunting, just do a couple at a time. The more you do this, the better you get. And believe me, nobody likes to trim up blocks. But if you do it now, this month, then next month when we have so much to do during month six, you'll be really glad that it's done and out of the way. One last thing, if your blocks are all a little shy, little less than eight and a half inches, don't worry about it. I specifically designed this quilt so that there are spacer strips in between each block. That means if there's some little indiscrepancies or they're not all exactly the same, we can make up the difference by using those background spacer strips and everything will look beautiful and polished and finished when you put the quilt together. So don't worry about it. There are gonna be no points to match when you're sewing these blocks into the quilt. They don't have to match any other block. So that should take the pressure off right there. So do a few at a time, get them all knocked out before next month. And then in month six, we're gonna tackle that great big block. But no worries because I'm gonna walk you through every step of the process. And month seven, we're putting it all together. You'll have this done before Christmas. 
Thank you so much for joining me. Mr. Kim, what do you think? It was a good day in the studio, wasn't it? It sure was. We had a great time. <laughs> Thank you for all your great video work. Thanks to Cheeto, wherever he is. I think he's off watching birds somewhere. We will see you next month for month six of the Black of the Month Blitz Quilt. From all of us at Janome, we're saying bye for now. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.